Let's get started with a new game here. Okay. Okay. It's called The Coaching Hot Seat. Ooh. Now, the Monday after the regular season ends. <laughs> Not a good day for certain It's coaches. doomsday for NFL coaches. We also have, like, the national championship game that night. But for the NFL, it is doomsday for coaches. Now, we've already had three teams fire their head coach it's during the regular season. Chargers, Panthers, Raiders. But it feels like we have a lot more coming. Yeah. So, yeah. we're going to go through a few of the... The coaches uh, whose names have been floating in the media that they may be let go. And we're going to share how hot we think their seat is. Burning, hot, warm, cold. cold. You can kind of give it whatever you want. Sure. Let's get started with Bill Belichick. All right. I'm going to say burning. You're saying burning. I'm saying burning. <laughs> I feel like his time in New England should be over. It's been reported that Bill already has a final meeting scheduled with Robert Kraft on Monday, now I don't think he's going to be fired. I think it would be a mutual agreement for Bill to explore other options because this has been the worst season of his career. He has gone from a dynasty with Tom Brady to a disaster since he's left. He hasn't won a playoff game since Brady left. And it used to be a failed season for the Patriots if they weren't in or winning a Super Bowl. I also want to say what's happening now doesn't take away from the incredible career that he has had with the Patriots, right? He's been with the Patriots for 24 years. Mm -hmm. That's a really long time. It also doesn't mean that he can't go somewhere else and be successful. Burning for you. It's just, it's, it's burning. He is one of the greatest coaches of all time, if not the greatest. But you have to remember, this is a billion-dollar business. Yep. And you can't keep someone for what they've done for you in the past when the last four seasons have been embarrassing sure. for the brand, especially when you were the dynasty when you had him and Tom Brady together. So I'm going to say Bill's seat is burning. I'm actually going to say it's just a little warm, actually. Oh, you think he might stay? I, I've been saying this. We've had this conversation uh, once or twice before already. There's a couple of reasons. A lot of the things of what you just mentioned, 24 years, a legacy, a staple, an icon. Yep. And that's what happens when you lose... Tom Brady. Like, it, you can't just keep having success. It's going to go down. But he's also the GM and drafted sure. Mac now, Jones. Now, right. That was maybe not his best decision. <laughs> Does he maybe step down from being the GM? But here's the thing. He's not going to do Nothing that. has been not said by the two most important sides. Nothing. Robert Kraft hasn't said anything. Bill Belichick hasn't said anything. But you know what we do know? That we found out midseason that he signed an extension. We don't even know how what many years that What we do know, though, is he did tell his coaching staff he is unsure sure if of he's his gonna, future. Right. But obviously, things That's move something. behind closed doors, and they can keep it close to the chest. Well, Patriots usually keep it tight. Right. And so if we, they want it out, it's going to get out. But the fact that he signed an extension, and we didn't know about it until later, I uh, yes, he did tell his people, or that's the story that he told people close to him, that he wasn't sure if he was going to come back. But I don't see how you can't put the sole blame on him. The roster wasn't strong in comparison to all the other rosters that we saw this year. It wasn't a strong roster. You can put the blame on him because he is also the GM. But even if He you, is the coach yeah, and he's the GM. So, yeah, the blame is on him. No, no, no. But the players still have to execute. If I believe in he's you. He's drafting these that's players. That's what I'm saying. But if I believe in you. And he does you, not have a great history of drafting offensive players. So that, but, but you know what I'm saying? Like, if I draft you, Alex Curry, because I think you have the potential, and then you go out there and you're not what I thought, like, yeah, that's my my fault, but you also did not do what I expected. So I just, I don't think the sole Your blame, fault. I don't think it's on Bill Belichick. But he's still the greatest defensive coach of our time. Yeah. So. And they also had right, weird so, wins this year, like against good teams. And you're like, oh. And you know what? They could go out <laughs> on top. Yeah. Like playing the Jets. And they, like, yeah. They, they, that would be a, if this is the end. That would be a very nice way for him to go out. Okay, sure. so let's move on to Ron Rivera in Washington. I'm going to say it's hot. This is a hot seat. This has also been the worst season of his coaching career, and it's it's not been pretty. 4-12, and 12, and his side of the ball is also defense. He is 32nd. That's last in points allowed per game and yards allowed per game. That just can't happen when you're a defensive coach. They – traded away their two biggest defensive pieces at the deadline, so they're obviously in a, a rebuild stage. I, I don't think it's looking good 
for for Ron, and I, which sucks because he's like a great human. A yeah. lot of these co- like he is like you Very just liked. He's so likable. Yeah, he's so likable. But no, yeah, I his mean he's playing burning. like he's what they're playing the Cowboys. Yeah. The Cowboys are playing for the NFC East title and home field advantage so they're not resting anyone it's going to be full speed for the postseason so I, he could even be fired after that game sunday if they have a gnarly loss they might not wait till i, I, I think his birthday is sunday i think his birthday is sunday oh, that's hard so let's let's hope it's not oh, that's sunday heartbreaking. I, I, it's either sunday or monday but i know his birthday oh, is like coming this is up gonna, this is gonna be a brutal birthday yeah so i agree his seat is burning hot yeah he is in he's in a tough spot not just was his team not executing when he has a defensive mind. Yeah. Uh, but the whole drama with the ownership, it's like it's an ownership that didn't pick you. It's an ownership that has a lot of money and is going to throw money at whatever they want. Yeah. You know what I like, New ownership. New, you yeah. want to have control. You want to pick your people. It, it's just it's an unfortunate he, he, situation. He is an all unfortunate around. situation. Yeah. But I'm burning. Like, yeah. he's out the door. Yeah. I, I, unfortunately. I just, I, I think his birthday is Sunday. So hopefully yeah. it's not Sunday. Oh, man. Okay. I'm confirm. <laughs> Next coach, and this one's been kind of weird because it's been floating around the media circuit and it just feels weird that it is. Mike Tomlin, Steelers. I think it's cold. He just secured his 17th consecutive non-losing season. That is insane. That's, that's legendary. And the issue isn't Mike Tomlin. I mean, they still have a chance this season to make it into the postseason. They're beating the Ravens right now 7 nothing. I mean, they also need some help to, like, make it happen. Right. But the issue is they don't have a franchise quarterback right now. Kenny Pickett is not their long-term solution. Yeah. And, like, even, like, looking ahead, like, they're right now in the draft order that, like, they're middle of the pack, currently 18th. So they're not going to get one of the top quarterbacks unless they trade up. But I, I don't feel like Mike Tomlin is the issue here. I have also put down cold next yeah. to Mike Tomlin. Okay. And I think kind of like what I said about Bill with the Patriots, he's he's a staple when it comes to the Steelers, 17th right? consecutive, consecutive non-losing season. You can't make that up. That's incredible. Like, he can't control that. You know what I mean? There's so many factors for him to be able to say that. And like you said, Kenny Pickett did not make the leap that people may mm-hmm. have expected this season. And what was rough, because obviously the defense has always been good for the Steelers. That's yeah. always been part of their identity, the, St- the Steelers' defense. It was a rough offensive season. And when we're Matt Canada's offensive play calling wasn't working, obviously, you know. So I'm with you. He is not Mm -hmm. the reason that things weren't working. He's a big reason why they're still in it. Yeah. So I anybody who had said halfway through the season, because this has been a topic of conversation, because remember, they lost to the Cardinals. They lost to the Patriots in back to back weeks. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of people were calling for his job. And it's like. No, you guys are are jumping the gun on Mike Tomlin right now when he's yeah. doing his job. So I'm yes. with you. Cold. Okay. Matt Eberflus, Just. the Bears. Just. Um, I'm going to say lukewarm okay. because <laughs> the Bears have a lot of decisions to make. Mm-hmm. And there are so many different directions that they can go. We just talked to Carmen Vitale, the NFC North insider for Fox Sports. And she said they've been keeping it extremely close. Yeah. To the chest. Are they going to move off Justin Fields? Are they going to keep that number one overall draft pick and take Caleb Williams? Are they going to keep Matt Eberflus? And if they get Caleb Williams, maybe give him another chance to see if he can work with him. I, they're ending their season strong. They've won four of their last five. Their defense has been great. His side of the ball. They've given up the fewest points allowed per game since week 12. I I think, again, I I. We're going to dive into this a little deeper in about 10 minutes. Okay. But I, the Bears have a lot of decisions to make. I don't think it's going to be letting go of Matt Eberflus this offseason. So I, I agree with you. There's a lot of questions surrounding the Bears. I put warm as well with Matt Eberflus. I feel like they probably want to kind of create a bit of a stable um environment yeah you know like let's try it again with you you've had you've had success at the end of the year maybe we keep Justin Fields add some players the success keeps going maybe we bring in Caleb Williams the success keeps going but I I don't think he is on his way out I think the questions are surrounding everything else yeah the quarterback yeah okay we got one more Mike Vrabel in Tennessee I think it's warm but I think he's lighting the stove (laughs) <laughs> there have been reports that Vrabel yeah. might want out. Yeah. So we're not totally sure which way this is going to go. Do the Titans want out or does Vrabel 
one out. And he even spoke to the media on Wednesday to try to like put the rumors to rest. And there's some like some key points in here. He said, of course, I want to be here. Be here as long as we can win, as long as yeah. we can do this thing. And it's been great. But it's also just been frustrating this year. And nobody wants to be where we are at all. You feel for the players. Having been in that situation, those guys are out there selling out. You just feel for them. And when you look out on the field and we're not winning, it's pretty obvious. Yeah. So it's – the Titans went from winning the AFC two years ago to – five and 11 this season you you can you can see the frustration and obviously you could hear he said yeah Vrabel said he is frustrated I want to stay as long as we can win that is a big if yeah that's a a, a big uh, piece of information coming uh-huh. from Mike Vrabel you know it's tough because that team the team just like didn't look good then Ryan Tannehill gets hurt Derrick Henry is not the King Henry that we have seen no. over the last couple of years. And, you know, uh, Mike Vrabel did not want A.J. Brown traded. No. He was against that oh, trade. Yeah. So, like, rookie Traylon Burks, like, hasn't stood out. But is it because Ryan Tannehill got hurt? Like, there's so many. It is. It, it, it sucks, and I can see why he's frustrated, and mm-hmm. I can see why he would be willing to two part ways and kind of give them a fresh start and he gets a fresh start. Yeah. Because there's so many things that just like out of control. Like he would get snatched up. He would be. Immediately. Like a lot of these coaches. I I think. Bill would get snatched up. Mike Tomlin. Harbaugh. Who's like rumored to possibly leaving Michigan and coming to the NFL. Vrabel. Like there are an insane amount of top tier coaches that are going to be available this year after the regular season. Yeah. And I actually like, I'm glad you said that because I feel like that's going to be something on Robert Kraft's mind about Bill Belichick Uh where it's like, if I release him, he has a new team in 10 minutes. He does. And and so like, Oh yeah. Like, and same thing with Mike Tomlin, even though we don't think Mike Tomlin's going anywhere. Yeah. But yeah, like that's a big, a big thing with these coaches. It's like, they'll find a job pretty quickly. Immediately. 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 So it's going to be interesting. That's going to kind of be the watch. Like it, Free agency last year, where were people going? This year, it's the coaches. The coaches. Where the head coach is going to be landing and who's going to be willing to part ways with someone to try to get one of the big names out on the market. It's going to be fun.